Okay, so today we have When You Sleep by My Bloody Valentine. Uh, and this band has been requested a lot since I did a reaction to Ride, you know, my introduction to Shoegaze, and uh, how this, you know, album Loveless, which this song was on, uh, you know, is considered, you know, arguably the greatest Shoegaze album of all time and all the stuff, and people are saying, you know, you got to react to them. So I thought, why the heck not? I'm intrigued, you know. Uh, and you know, I'm curious. So we're going to get into this one today, talk about it after. So let's start and let's go. Oh. Right, didn't expect it to end like that. Uh, okay, so When You Sleep by My Bloody Valentine. And, uh, I mean, I have to say at the top, 
like, <laughs> like I said before, you know, Ride was my introduction to shoegaze, and then, you know, My Bloody Valentine now, and it's like, coming into this, I know, you know, watching some videos on shoegaze and stuff, because, you know, I like to learn some stuff, um, you know, that, like, and at one point that many people tell me is, uh, you know, shoegaze is not for everybody. And it's just, like, I can imagine, you know, playing this in a car, uh, in the car, whatever, if, with somebody who doesn't know it or whatever. And it's just, I, I can imagine they'd probably be like, what are you listening to? Um, <laughs> but it's just, like, because it's, like, with the freaking, you know, obviously how I searched up the definition of shoegaze last time. Uh, you know, the freaking guitar distortion, guitar effects, you know, obscured vocals, all this stuff. And obviously here, My Bloody Valentine has that in spades once again, just like, uh, like I said last time with Ride. But I mean, here, it's, just, it's like the, the song sounds like the album cover. Uh, you know, <laughs> just it's pink noise. And uh, I say that, you know, good in a good way, uh, you know, noise and all that. Um, but, you know, because the, the, the layered vocals, like I said, you know, the ghostly guitars. And uh, so, you know, I was kind of laughing throughout the song as well, because it's, I don't know why, but just so powerful and heavy for some reason, it made me snicker, snicker. And uh, yeah, it's just I don't, it's so, yeah, like I said, it's just so heavy and powerful. I was just like, Jesus, it's just nuts. And then. I guess, you know, the chorus there, it sounded, I guess, you know, it was just like the woo, kind of that thing. Uh, I was going to say during the song, but I figured, why what, should I talk over the song? But, you know, that part was so catchy, uh, just, you know, like, so mellow as well. I mean, because it's hard to say because, like I said, the guitar, it, it all sounds so heavy. The song sounds so heavy and powerful, but also it's mellow. Uh, and also it's a song where it's like this... It, it seems like, you know, with this song anyway, and with, you know, what I've learned from Shoegaze already, you can't really, you know, rock out, you know, like a song by, you know, some, like a, a heavy metal kind of song, you know, how you can, you know, freaking rock out to a song like that. Um, you know, with this, it's, just, it's more like, you know, a vibe, you know, it's easy to vibe with. It's easy, you know, bob your head back and forth and it just sounds, you know, <laughs> it's also, it sounds dumb to say, but, you know, just being in, you know, this, this room you know, by myself, listening to this with headphones, it's like, it's, it's like an experience where it's just like, I feel like I'm the only one listening to the song, and it's just, <laughs> I don't know how, if that makes any sense, but it's just like, it's such a weird, you know, it's such an experience, and again, like I said, I can tell, and like people have told me, uh, you know, this kind of music is not for everybody, but it's just like, especially, I have to say, with Kevin, uh, Kevin Shields' vocals, uh, looking at the lyrics and what he was saying, I mean, his voice, I mean, the guitar, almost like, uh, you know, overpowered the vocals, you know, the vocals were kind of quieter, uh, but, you know, his voice sounds so kind of sweet and gentle and just underneath, uh, you know, the, the instruments, he just, I don't know, it just sounds so sweet, I guess, like I said, it's just like, I don't know, everything, you know, taken in here, I was just like, goodness gracious, uh, and, uh, yeah, so just hearing one track off of this album, uh, you know, again, this was like, you know, has and I, you know, read, you know, because I wanted to know how to say these guys or the names of the band members because I was looking up and I was like, how do you say that name? Um, and I, you know, ran across a Kevin Shields interview, I think it was, and uh, you know, how he was just talking about how you know they wanted to take elements from the 60s because going into the 80s, you know, the 60s kind of uh went away in music, but they wanted to bring it back into the 90s, that's what he was saying. And I mean, yeah, I can really, you know, get that sense of, you know, 60s elements and trying to bring that back into the 90s. And I think I, I've said that before because somebody else said it, uh, another musician. But anyway, uh, you know, this is a long explanation just to say <laughs> that, you know, I, I enjoyed the track and uh, it's just so heavy. And yeah, obviously, like I said, you know, learning about what shoegaze is, I mean, yeah, My Bloody Valentine all over. So anyway, <clears throat> like I usually do, I am on <laughs> Genius, uh, and there is an about for the song, uh, so let me just see here. Uh, so it says, When You Sleep is track five on My Bloody Valentine's 1991 album, album Loveless, and I mean, 91, what a year for music, good lord. Um, uh, <laughs> I was going to, you know, name some albums, but I'm not going to go through it all. Um, the album sound was dominated by the ideas of lead vocalist and guitarist Kevin Shields, who wrote the entire song. And I also do know that he wrote many of the songs on the uh, album. Uh, you know, like I said, he was like their leader. Um, it says, When You Sleep was the first single from the album, released in November of 91. It says, after 11 or 12 takes, the singer decided the vocals would be difficult to get perfect, uh, resulting in the layered, almost muddled effect we hear in the final recording. Uh, so <laughs> I like that he was just like, you know, I can't get it right. Let's just put all the vocals in there. And yeah, muddled, you know, layered, all this stuff. It just, again, like it said on, you know, Shoegaze's freaking definition on Wikipedia, the obscured vocals. And that's what it is. It's just like... 
the muddled it, it just sounds so different i mean that's what it is it's a different experience it's like like i said i guess you know trying to explain like i said earlier you know i i feel like i'm the only one, only one listening to it when you're listening to it in the moment it's just like just because it's just so like i said i guess it's just so new i mean if you haven't heard anything like this before it's just like damn anyway uh <laughs> it goes on uh shields also claims that they spent way more time on the lyrics than ever on the music the words were often written in late night, eight to ten hour long sessions, Jesus, uh, before the pair were due to record the vocals. Shields said, there's nothing worse than bad lyrics. <laughs> yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, with a guitar bass that places an emphasis on tre uh, tremolo bar usage and a desire to keep the vocals lower in the overall mix, and like I said, the vocals were lower, My Bloody Valentine created a perfect example of the shoegaze rock subgenre. And like I said, uh, Many people have, you know, loved My Bloody Valentine uh, for, you know, propping up, obviously, shoegaze and, you know, bringing it to the forefront. Uh, and then the last point here, also, even though it sounds like Shields is singing uh, this one with Butcher, he actually sings it alone. Uh, so, yeah, I was wondering if there was harmonies or what, because, you know, like, but, uh, yeah, again, it was just layer of vocals and it was only him, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, just nuts. And also, you know, talking about Butcher and uh, Shields, just to look at the personnel here, just to see... Again, who's on what? And like I said, there's uh, the drummer's name kind of <laughs> freaked me out. Uh, but yeah, obviously uh, on guitar, it says Belinda Butcher and Kevin Shields, uh, written by Kevin Shields, of course. Uh, and it goes on bass, Debbie, I want to say Gooch? Goo? Yeah, Gooch, maybe? Possibly? I don't know. Anyway, Debbie on bass. And then on drums, it's Colum. Uh, oh, Kis oh, good Lord, hold the phone. I want to say Colum Okiosik. But either way, Colum. On the drums as well and uh, you know like I said there it's just also you know perfectly sounding uh, and all, uh, that shoegaze sound that it became and uh, you know just like I said with the whole you know it's not really a you know rocking out whatever it's not a song where it's you know the drums gonna, the drummer's gonna have a solo or whatever um, just everybody here just works so pro so I was gonna say properly perfectly together and uh, again Kevin's vocals just you know lower in the mix just I mean I don't know it just adds it all up and uh, creates a freaking a good tune. Uh, so anyway, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to like, you know, again, it's just such a new experience. And I'm just like, I don't know what to say. It's just like, <laughs> like for 91. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I can't, you know, I can't believe, you know, uh, thinking back to like high school and stuff, you know, and thinking how I like, you know, bands from the 90s, of course, like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, you know, I loved grunge. I mean, all this stuff. And I miss, you know, other bands, you know, from the, you know, British bands, obviously, that I've listened to a lot now, uh, from the 90s, and it's just like, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm listening to all of them now, it's just like, what a treat. Anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess, I mean, I don't know if there's anything else I really need to say, uh, well, actually, let me just look at the lyrics here, because, I mean, the lyrics were also beautiful, I mean, how Kevin said the lyrics in a song can't be bad, you know, it's always bad when they're bad, uh, so, you know, I just love how it starts off, you know, when I look at you, Oh, but I don't know what's real. Once in a while, you make me laugh, uh, and I'll sleep tomorrow, and it won't be long. Once in a while, then you take me down when you walk away. Uh, so, you know, there are some annotations here on genius, you know, the genius, uh, the, <laughs> the ethereal feeling of love when one should look into the eyes of a woman. It says here, uh, really, or anybody, you know, um, whoever you love. Uh, and it goes on as well, you know, looking at the song more critically and as reference in a future annotation, Shields is being used by his lover and then left alone again as if it didn't mean anything. Uh, this dynamic has left them confused and unable to understand if the person has real feelings for them or if they're just being used for presumably sex. Uh, and then we go on down. And again, there's not too many lyrics here, honestly. Uh, there's three verses and that's it. But I mean, it just says so much. And I mean, again, the music is just, <laughs> the music's so heavy and everything. Um, it goes on, when you say I do, oh, but I don't believe you. I can't forget it. Uh, when you sleep tomorrow and it won't be long, once in a while, when you make me smile and you turn your long blonde hair. So here again, the narrator or, you know, just Kevin, he sounds like, you know, he's having, you know, he doesn't believe her. Uh, like it said there, he's having second, you know, second guessing her and all this stuff. And then the final verse. And when I look at you, oh, but I don't know what's real very telling line once in a while and you make me laugh and I'll sleep tomorrow <laughs> uh, and then it goes on again you know it won't be long once in a while take me down when you walk away uh, so you know that last ending there you know the walk away part uh, uh, there is an annotation here I guess I'll just read this last one and then we'll be done uh, but it's the cycle of the person the song is about 
uh, is giving the writer writer uh, mind and not continues. It's about giving the writer mind and not continues. I don't, uh, anyway, uh, Take Me Down suggests that they care about the writer, maybe even love them. Uh, however, simultaneously, this also suggests that emotionally they make the writer feel loved when they take them down. Uh, making them feel horrible and unrequited by walking away and no longer giving them this affection, a paradoxical truth about some relationship relationships. So, you know, all that said, again, <clears throat> just talking about, uh, you know, that last verse here, last verse there in the last line, you know, uh, then you take me down when you walk away. And it's just like, you know, uh, yeah, paradox, obviously a paradox going on here uh, happens in, like I said, many relationships or some relationships and, uh, you know, just kind of like the, the writer, uh, Kevin Shields, the narrator, whatever is, you know, they're kind of, um, at a fork in the road, it sounds like, and it's just like, you know, you love me, but then, you know, you take me down. It's like, what the heck? Uh, but yeah. Uh, so like I said, deep lyrics, obviously they spent time on them. Like you said, you know, uh, they spent, you know, eight to 10 hour sessions, uh, writing lyrics. So obviously, you know, they took their time and, uh, I mean, it produced a friggin', I mean, a monumental album, obviously. And the song, uh, is just one piece of it. And, uh, yeah, to listen to more of them, uh, I, I can only imagine what else, you know, it sounds like, but anyway, I guess that's all I gotta say. Uh, <laughs> so thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting, and requesting, you know, my bloody, bloody Valentine, my God. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I guess that's all I gotta say. So thanks again for watching. Thanks for getting me to 3000 subscribers. Like I said, in an earlier video, uh, that I made, uh, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you guys again soon.